Let's go. We're here. It's episode 586, the Soul Not For Sale podcast. Who do we got on right now? We got Joe Rogan, Tulsi Gabbard, BJ Penn, and they're talking about 15-minute cities. I did not expect to hear Rogan talk about 15-minute cities. In the past three months, he's talked about it here and there. He's commented on it. He's brought it up briefly. But in this clip, he actually does a breakdown of what they are because he's trying to explain it to BJ Penn. And uh, it's good. It's good. I'm always glad when someone with a platform like his decides to bring up a topic like this. They're talking about what's going on in Europe, Oxford mainly, of how there have been um, little testing of 15-minute cities here and there, which was received with much protest a lot of protest so they're going to talk about that jamie has a little bit of trouble finding any information on 15 minute cities which is fine because i found some so when it comes to that part and they're talking about the research and they have their little back and forth about you know what to look for and this and that i'll pause briefly i'll give you guys a little breakdown because you know joe's talking about it like it's something that's happening in europe and it is it, it very much is on a on a much larger scale than you'd think. But I'm going to bring you some information that shows you that it's actually happening in the United States as well. America, it's happening. North America, in Canada as well, it's happening. So I just wanted to uh, let you guys know about that as well. So we'll be doing that. And uh, before I get into this clip... You know I got to bring you to the store. Always got to bring you to the store. This is IamCoachColin.com, where you can get all your soul not for sale clothing. This right here is the newest design that we have. Dr. Evil himself, the cricket connoisseur, telling us that we will own nothing and be happy. And we, the people, are giving him the salute that he so desperately deserves. (laughs) Um, We also have the certified pure blood shirt for those of you that survived the pandemic, unscathed and untainted. Good job. Good mental fortitude you got there, but please remain strong over the next 12 months. You may be tested again, and we have the one that started it all, the Soul Not For Sale shirt. This one is just my personal favorite. Uh, It says it all right there. You can wear that at Thanksgiving, and, uh, you know, your aunt will roll her eyes at you, and you and you can just let her know, you know, soul not for sale. And she'll be like, what are you talking about? And, and then you can go on a straight-up rant about what you're talking about, the WEF and Agenda 2030 and all these things, Hollywood and all the things they do. <laughs> all of that's available on IamCoachColin.com. And if you want 10% off, all you have to do is put in the discount code IamCoachColin. That's all capital letters that's all one word and there's one l in the name colin and that gets you 10 percent off no sign up nothing like that and we also have public enemy number one so fittingly since the uh, 15 minute cities are actually a part of agenda 2030 but if you've already done that discount code with us you've already chosen to go on that website thank you so much you have no idea how much it means to us now let's get in to this clip does that mean we're just going to have to go this far now as far as the population? Well, there's also this talk of 15-mile cities, right? Yeah, tell or me about those. I don't cities. know much the about them. The idea is that you'll essentially That's what be this city contained. Is. That's what this city is. But you'll essentially be contained unless you get permission to leave. That's true. Which really? Is, yeah, How are they going to put the, us in there? The idea they're, tr- they're starting to roll out in Who? Europe. They're, oh, okay. they're talking about... I think they've already implemented but, this somewhere. Well, you would, but you the, would think... You would think, well, I'm just thinking about Lahaina when you're talking about this because you would think, well, how are they going to put us on that land of these 15-minute cities? But then you would think, well, how are they going to get us off our land? But they just have. In Lahaina, they just got these people off their land, and if you go... Well, they're talking about it. They haven't done it no, yet. No, no, no. I right? mean, they, can't, they cannot go on their land now because right. there, there's, a, there's an 80-year-old fella, and he, he wants a, his house burned down, and his safe is in there, and he wants to go check on his safe, but he can't get in. He can't get in the property, and... You know, I, right, but we're assuming eventually he can get in. Right, they haven't but, kicked the people well, off their if, land if yet. FEMA no, doesn't, if FEMA doesn't steal his safe first, or whoever is working, or any workers and yeah. that kind of stuff, if everything doesn't disappear. Right. But it's just interesting. You would think you would be able to go there and say, no, 
get off, you're trespassing, I'm going to go on my land. Right. You would think, right. how can it be any different? Right, there's no fire it, anymore. How can it be any how different? It be it's any impossible different. Right. for these people to be keeping them off their land. It's not, a, it's not a thing that you negotiate about. It's not this or that. It's, right. No, that's your land. Hey, get off, trespassing, trespassers will be shot or right. whatever it is. I mean, you know? I understand not wanting tourists to go view it. Yeah. But if you can show identification, this is my land, yeah. they should let you right through. Yeah. 100%. I, Especially I know an initial, so far after I spe- the, Your safe is there. You're yeah, an yeah. 80-year-old man. You just want to yeah. see if your money's yeah. there. Yeah. I know you an know? initial concern was the, the toxicity of what happened yeah. there. Uh, but the reality is with all of the, the um, recovery teams that have been going through there, all the federal officials, that, like all of the, the government visitors that have gone there, there is no excuse why they can't tell this 80 year old guy, hey, here's a mask that will protect mm-hmm. you from breathing in all this crap. Yeah. Go to your land. Yeah. It, it is funny because as kids, we played in asbestos our whole lives. We've cleaned it up thousands of times, put it in trash bags, it jumped. It was on the ceilings before when we were kids, that white stuff. Yeah. And like now nobody can, I, the, yeah. I haven't heard of anybody with asbestos. I mean, well, I, but I could be wrong. The, I just don't know who it is. They, people you know? got cancer from it, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very. Very cancer causing. Very good. We used to we we literally used to play in that stuff. Yeah, I mean, well, we whack it off the yeah. roof and, not and good, all though. that. But that's you not know? Good. And we're still here. Well, there was, well listen, yeah. there, was, there was lead paint in people's houses. They had to yeah. remove that too because it was lowering kids' IQs. What are those uh, fifteen minutes? Yeah, I'm curious. What about are the that. plans for these? Fucking I saw. I I've heard of it, but as I look it up, there's an article from Canada that says it's a. Uh, a little bit of a conspiracy theory. Canada's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> Canada's <laughs> literally a functioning conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's just a concept to bring things to within 15 minutes. Right, of but but isn't there something going houses? on in a 15 minute city that they tried in the UK? Isn't there something along those lines? <sighs> just just Google that. 15 minute city in UK. But I mean, what, what do you want me to Just see what it. For. Just Google that. 15 minute city in UK. 15 minute I, city. I know what's going to come up, I don't know what I'm looking for, is what I'm saying. You're electric electric city or something, I mean, right? Well, I mean, they've talked about walkable communities for a long time. Exactly. Yeah. Fifteen minute hysteria. That's from March. Rather that, benign that urban looks... planning concept. Yeah, the English city of Oxford. Click that. Yeah. Okay. An academic behind the hit urban p- the hit. It's a hit, guys. Mm. It's like fucking Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> it's a hit. The hit urban planning concept slammed flat earthers. Spreading fake news about livable cities. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're a flat Blame earther the flat if earthers. you don't want to be trapped in a 15-minute Where, city. Where's Kelly Slater when you need him? <laughs> so scroll down here. Is Kelly Slater a flat earther? Uh, he jokes around. He, he just <laughs> torches people all the time. Um, so a rather benign urban planning concept is shaking up the English city of Oxford, sending thousands of people into the streets to protest what they say is a dystopian plan. To take away their personal freedoms and lock them into their neighborhoods. The concept of the 15-minute city popularized by the Franco-Colombian academic Carlos Moreno aims to make cities more livable by ensuring that all essential services, think schools, medical care, and shops, are within the distance of a short walk or bicycle ride. Broadly, the idea is to cut down on long commutes and car emissions and improve people's quality of life, ensuring they have access to quality services where they live. It's not the way it's being seen. In Oxford, news of the city council <laughs> adopted a plan to embrace the 15-minute city model, p- prompted fierce backlash with local groups and public figures alleging that authorities plan to restrict residents to their immediate neighborhoods and strictly police their movements, which will happen eventually. The idea that this that won't happen eventually, particularly in the case of a pandemic or something where they can control people, that this is not a this is not a fucking conspiracy theory. The outrage has been fanned by popular right wing media figures and politicians who seized on the issue as an outrageous example of government overreach. If they do limit people to those places, that is exactly what people are terrified of. If they embrace this concept and create this model and then somehow or another mandate that you stay inside that. Yeah. That's fucking terrifying. Which in the age of the COVID lockdowns is not out. It's, it, there's no there's no surprise that people are. Right. Well, yeah. you just by the guys calling the people that are talking about it flat earthers. Yeah. Hey, yeah. buddy. Yeah. No, it's, it's a spoiler alert. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's it interesting. makes you think. Yeah. It, it makes, makes you wonder. It does make you think. Now, look, if. If you wanted to make sure that people have uh, all their goods and services very close to them so they could walk to, that's a great idea. Yeah. This, but the concept of somehow or another gating that or stopping people from going out or having checkpoints, that's what gets people concerned. Yeah. And they should be. And yeah. 100%. Now, of course, this is something that's happened in Oxford. There was massive protests. I mean, these people were out in the streets daily, daily fighting back against this whole thing. They were 
they were protesting, they were making their voices heard, and uh, a lot of the world took notice, but a lot of people didn't actually know that it was going on. But more people actually don't know that it's going on in North America, which is very surprising. So let's go over to this really quick. And uh, this is not, you're not misseeing this. this, isn't something that I made, this is a website. Uh, it's uh, the, t the top 25 potential 15-minute cities um, in America. So we're, we're seeing Oakland, Minnesota, Cincinnati, Washington, Boston, Baltimore, Miami, Florida, San Francisco, Long Beach, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Seattle, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Lexington, Sacramento, Anaheim. So there's a lot of different places. Those are the potential ones that I just read off to you. These are ones that are going a little further into the whole concept. So now let's just say these cities offer the best for the best bet for improving urban living. So these are the ones that are almost on board fully. They, they have these plans in the making. You should check with your local government if you want to know about it. Uh, Miami, Florida, San Francisco, of course, Pittsburgh, Boston. Washington, Baltimore, Minneapolis, Long Beach, Oakland, Cincinnati. So these are some of the uh, top ones. Now, even more so, Cleveland is actually working on this. This is from 2022. They have plans to actually uh, bring this into fruition. So just showing you that this is happening in North America, very much so. Um, the mayor of Cleveland, his name is Justin M. Bibb, B-I-B-B. -B. He is uh, pushing this forward as quickly as possible, and that's not the only place where this is happening. Uh, also, a place called Cedar Rapids, that's in Iowa, I believe. They're just talking about the, the exact same thing. The students in the transportation and planning studio will collaborate with the MPO and City of Caesar, uh, Cedar Rapids to develop a guidebook that collects the current state of 15-minute cities planning efforts focused on North American examples. The guidebook will pull together information on initiatives currently underway, processes for developing 15-minute city plans, implementation challenges, and analyst techniques. So just wanted to show that like this is happening in a lot of different places, not just Europe. A lot of people think it's just Europe because Europe's had the most negative response to it, but it is something that's happening. And I love, again, I love that Joe was willing to actually bring that up and actually break it all down because it's something that a lot of people don't know about and it's already being branded with all sorts of negativity as they do. And you really got to watch out for this kind of thing. It, it, in its in its most normal state it is actually a very beneficial thing to have everything within a 15 minute walk or bike ride would be beneficial for a lot of people right but then at the same time when you think about it you know i don't know about you i have like five parks within a 10 minute walking distance and i don't live in a 15 minute city I have food that's very close as well, amenities that are very close as well, working out. All these things are actually very close. And I didn't have to, or, you know, the town that I'm in, they didn't have to make it into a 15-minute city. You know, I, I would imagine a lot of us have that going on. You know, the only difference is once it becomes a 15-minute city, they are pushing cars out of it. And that's not, that's, you can't, you can not even bring that up as a negative. It's just the way the plan works. The plan works with putting people first. That's how it's branded. And cars are polluting, so they don't want cars around. Now, where all these cars go, I'm unsure. Obviously, I, that, that part just doesn't make any sense to me. If you live in a place and your car can't be there, where does your car go? I don't get it. Is, is it 15 minutes away? Can you go and get it? I, I'm, I'm not really sure. Maybe it's just in the garage. But then can you drive it? I'm, it's all very unclear because every place that has it going on, besides Oxford in the UK, 
is it's so in its infancy. They're, they're still going about the processes. They're still thinking about what to do. I don't know if they're going to have to tear down buildings and build other things to actually make sure that everybody has these things. But like Joe said, it can get out of hand. And we've seen things get out of hand before. You know, if you're in your 30s, you've seen the past six years, things have gotten out of hand. If you're in your 60s, you've probably seen, if you're in your 60s, 70s, you've probably seen countless examples of how something was meant to be very good and for the people and it got out of hand. It, it just happens. And um, that's not even me being conspiratorial. That's just me being a common sense person, I think. Sometimes, sometimes it blends with me. It blends so much with me because I'm doing these videos. I don't know where the normal begins and the tinfoil hat starts. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but if you haven't liked the video already, like the video. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. We're making one to three videos a day. And I don't know many other people doing that. Other than that, I'm out.